You are listening to The New Man, Beyond the Macho Jerk and the New Age Wimp. Your host is men's coach, Trip Lemire. Are you waiting for confidence, passion, or certainty to come along before you make a big change? Are you dicking around until you figure out what you really want to do with your life? And why do so many rich, comfortable guys end up unhappy? Today I'm talking to Joe Bernstein. I've been coaching him for almost two years now. And we're gonna talk about some of the things he's learned from changing careers, getting a divorce, and losing more than 150 pounds. In this discussion, we talk about the mindset that keeps us playing small, plus how mission, money, and meaning intertwine to create an amazing life. Dude, they, they updated that Skype music, man. It has a beat. Got a beat? Make you want to move? Yeah, it was like, it had a little, it was the same, like, doo, 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 but it had like a little thump to it. <laughs> yeah, it did. I got, you know, I do the test call, the Skype test call, and the, the gal yeah. that comes on there, I always wonder, I, I just have a thing for that accent, so I was like, oh, is, she... it a, is, is it a British accent? Yeah. Yeah. I was no. like, I wonder what she looks like. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what she's like. <laughs> well, she's probably a robot, so she probably looks damn good. She's not a robot, that's a real person. She's got hopes and dreams. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yep. She's, uh, <laughs> I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know what she's about. Yeah. Besides um, robot fantasies, how you doing? I don't you, you're, on, you're on the robot thing still. I'm, I'm convinced she's still a real person. I'm not letting <laughs> that one go. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with mine. Got it. I'm well. I'm doing well. I'm trying to think... Uh, yeah, it's a little late in the day, so I'm usually kind of winding things down by this time. But yeah, I'll take it easy on you then. How are you going to take it easy on me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it would be cute to say. I what say are, a lot of cute shit. What are we talking about? Today? Yeah. What, Honestly? What, what wants to happen? What needs to happen What today? wants to happen? What wants to happen? What wants to be discussed? Yeah, it's an opportunity to talk about the things that I've done, the things that I've helped people with. Certainly, that's great. Um, but I'm I'm not that attached. I'm kind of like, let's just have this conversation and see where it goes. Well, one of the things that came up for me as we were getting into this conversation, like, what well, what would it be? Is is there's this relationship between mission and money, and I define mission mm-hmm. as the thing that we'll have many missions in our lifetime. I think, I think, I think it's a huge mistake to think like, I've got to have one mission for this lifetime. I think that's just egoic. That's the brain. That's the self image saying, yes, this is what I attach my self image to and my, my importance. But it's really just like, (laughs) no, right now I'm learning how to do X, Y, Z in my yard, right? right? That's the mission or this, I'm learning how to feed my family with, with ABC or, and we just have many of them. They can be hero's journeys. Like just, you can take mission out and put hero's journey, but they're ultimately in service of, in my philosophy, they're ultimately in service of, greater freedom, aliveness, and peace and love. And we can go further into that if you want. But ultimately, that's what I get is like, if we're not creating that, then we're going to think like, so, we're going to feel something's off. We can have all the wins, egoically, all the money in the bank, all the power, all the uh, admiration. But if we still feel trapped, if we still feel drained, if we still feel tense and stressed out, if we still feel alone, it was a failure. It didn't work out. So ultimately, we're hedging for what we ultimately want is that freedom, aliveness, peace, and love. So the mission is in service of those experiences. Mm-hmm. And then so, okay, well then how does money play into that? How does, how do, how do we, how do we support that? So I'm curious about your own journey because you, you've been on a hell of a ride. You, you were way overweight. You were a salesman and a what were you selling? You were cell phones or or bows or it, well, I remember yeah. it was a few things, right? So yeah, yeah. Give I us was, the before um, picture, right? So the before picture. Yeah, man. I I grew up obese, overweight, and my whole life I kind of didn't give myself a chance with anything with with social life, with money, with women. All What's obese? Like so, I want a picture, like. <sighs> Uh, you know, I, when I was 16, I was probably over 300 pounds at certain points. So I was up and down. I wrestled. I played football. So I'd lose a bunch of weight. I'd gain a bunch back. 
Uh, by my mid twenties, I was three hundred forty pounds. I'm five foot ten. So, and you you're what now? Uh one. What is it? Tuesday? Probably one eighty seven. <laughs> I'll be 183 three, come Friday and 190, but now. Yeah, 340 like to yeah. 340 to 180-ish, 190-ish. That's amazing. Yeah, we'll call, we'll call 180-ish, yeah. I've been okay. lower, but higher. And so that was a part of, okay, so, yeah. So I, I interrupted you. I wanted to, because I, I think, I know you're kind of tired of that, but that's a huge transformation just physically. And if we're talking about coaching, it's like, why do we do, why would we hire a coach? Well, it's be, it's to transform some aspect of our lives. And so I want to just lay that out there. It's like, you've got some familiarity with transformation, period. Right. That's not the only area, but that's one. Yeah, that, there's that. And so I was, I, I also had some learning disabilities. So I never applied myself hard much in school and you know, dropped out of college and got a, a job and got fired from that in about two weeks and then got this retail job with Bose Corporation. And in fact, I loved it, but I was 30 years old going, all right, what's next? I've been a store manager for years. I'm managing multi million dollar stores and multiple at times. And yeah, it just kind of felt like I hit a wall. So um, I wasn't ever going to make too much in that career. And if you're going to make money in that career, you are working your butt off. There's no work-life balance. There's no like personal wellness. Was money so important to you? Money was never that important to me. Money was not a big deal. I always felt like I could have a modest living and then that would be enough that, that I kind of knew from a young age, I don't, I, I didn't think a lot of money was going to make me happy, but I also believe that might've been a story connected to my, my idea that I, I probably would never make them enough. So we, I created this idea that eh, money's not a big deal. If I don't right? want it, I won't be disappointed. I don't think it was thing. conscious, but yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I was 16 and I remember I didn't frame my life this way, but I can, if I look back, my reality is 16 years old. I thought I'll probably die in my mid forties. Cause I'm just, I'm going in the wrong direction as far as weight and health. I probably never make much money. I probably wouldn't have many successes in romance and, and in love life. And I, I didn't deserve to have a family. I, you know, there was all this crap that I really, I, I lived out of those beliefs and created that life. And really was it did. just like, ho-hum, oh, well, I'll be done? Or or was oh. there a, like a dissonance down there like, fuck this? Consciously, there was acceptance. Consciously, it was just my path. Like, I just, that's what I saw. There wasn't a resistance in my mind. But I was, you've caught this. I still have some deep anger, some deep resentment, some frustration that shows up. And back then, I was very much either the typical nice guy or like some sort of enraged animal or some sort of depressed animal. Like I just, I would pendulum swing. So yeah, there was, most of me didn't want that, but I was resigned. Did you see, it was it just like, I'm not the guy that's going to do that. What's, what was the belief down there? Just like, it's impossible. I mean, there, you had to have looked out and see that other people had transformed their lives. But when you saw that, what was, were you just like, yeah, that's not me. I'm not going to transform my life. Yeah. It was just me. I'm just, I'm just a, a 300 pounder. I mean, that was it. I'm just a guy who's not going to be good with women. Probably never will be. I'm just a guy who can do okay in school without applying himself, which I'll never make a lot of money. It's just, that was it. It was just, that's eh, just who I am. Fixed. This is it. This yeah. is locked in. This is my path in life. I'm going to be the big guy and I'm not going to have these experiences. Those are for other people. Yeah, I don't even remember being jealous or envious of other people that had the things that looked like they were what they wanted. Um, I created a lot of my life around being different. Well, I if I can't sure. be part of the crowd, <laughs> then I'm then I'm gonna go be this other guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I still do that. But but back Me too. then I did. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I, I used to do it in in some pretty unhealthy ways, some pretty toxic ways. A lot of isolation. Certainly not the case anymore. You know. Um. So yeah, that, that was the life that I created. So you turn 30, you starting to realize, wait a second, what, what, what flipped it over into? Yeah. So some of it was by default. I, I did end up getting married. I started dating after like, I, man, I don't even think I ever shared this with you. We, we, I spent probably from 19 to 25, didn't date <laughs> what they would call involuntarily celibate, uh -huh. like had no love life and almost no social life, very little, just a couple close friends. Um, but I had lost like 40 or 50 pounds one summer and gotten to like 290 and thought, well, maybe, maybe, maybe Joe can deserve some love. So I, I like went and did some online dating. I met someone, first person I met, 
we created a pretty toxic mess together, got married. The, the first person you that, met right? on a on an online dating site, yes, you went and got yes, married. Man. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> Some people are like that's what they're hoping for. Like, oh, I'm done. You know? Oh God, please don't. If that's what you're hoping for, call me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, but, they open no, the so app and they're like, happened. "This is it." Well, it was just all full on scarcity on both sides, and both sides. It was never in alignment. And we just kept making it work. And it was toxic from day one. Like it was weird from day one. And point was, they were byproducts. She kind of whipped me into shape a little bit, helped me grow up. I started to learn what I loved in life. And I started to learn I enjoyed the outdoors. I enjoyed, you know, actually moving my body a little bit. I really got into healthy food. So by the time we toxically imploded a few years later, I had already lost about 80 pounds just naturally without trying. You know, That's we had cool. dogs. I was getting up in the morning, walking every morning, walking every afternoon. I was eating natural, healthy food and just losing weight. So that was a big shift. I realized, wait a second, I don't know if I have to be a 300 pounder my whole life. Um, and then when we split up, it was also around the time I was realizing the stagnation in my career. I, I was I was I was the picture of passion. Like I love I loved what I did for a long in time. In the sales and the, yeah. the, the managers. The, yeah. I loved it. It was a great company. Mm -hmm. I, I loved the work. It allowed me to have like a, a work schedule where I could go out to concerts all the time, which is one of the things I enjoy. You know, I could have like one o'clock, two o'clock work shifts and be at a concert on a Tuesday night. There was a lot that aligned with my life and I enjoyed it. Cool. Um, and I rose the ranks pretty quickly. But after a few years, I realized, God, I don't want the next step here. I'm stagnant in career. The woman that I thought I'd live my life with just came and told me she's pretty much done. It yeah. was a huge wake up call uh, late 2012 and then early 2013, we split up like a flip, almost like I, I remembered looking at a crossroads and going, well, on this side, go going back to being even more obese. I was still overweight, I was still very overweight. Okay. On this side, it's obesity, no love, no sex all my life, a retail job where I probably can't even manage it physically very long. Mm. Now, on this side, it was get my shit together, go out there and find love, create a social life. I almost had like nothing except for I had a place to live. I had a career that I knew I had to change. And so it was just, I was really motivated to create a social life, create a love life and started just dropping more weight and getting healthy. And within a year, it was like huge transformation. It seems huge. like though uh, the thing I want to, cause there's yeah. a, there was just a seed of, I can do this, right? Like somewhere I, in there, that seed got planted of, you know what? If I wanted to, I could do it, which is different than, eh. I don't really care. I don't think I can. No. It's not for me. But that that little seed turned into a wedge and it helped it just created those two possibilities, right? Yeah, it was almost like once I saw the opportunity, it was the first time in my life I thought, hey, maybe I could have some success socially and with women. Like that was the big driver. Mm -hmm. And then it was like that seed exploded. Once I saw that path, it was like there was no turning back. Mm -hmm. Um I just went. It was like two days after we decided to divorce. It was just like, boom, I'm going to the gym. I'm going, you know, learning, I'm reading, I'm studying, I'm applying the things right away. I'm changing my social life. I'm learning. All, I just got insatiable about learning. And then I applied. Like that was a thing I think I did that a lot of people don't just heard something, tried it, read something, tried it, just yeah. kind of like, and things took off this upward, upward spiral was almost in stop, unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. I can appreciate that. I went through a huge ordeal after a breakup in uh 97 and uh <laughs> but yeah I, I went from being completely uncurious about the world and how it worked to a voracious like that's when i just started to I, I had to learn everything i wanted to travel i wanted to experience life but before then it was i wanted to live in my own little box and i didn't want to know about the world i didn't want anything to threaten the way that i saw the world and and you know how i could manage things and it was control really Nope. Uh, so it sounds like something, even though it was a breakup, and I think most people think of breakups as a bad thing. It seems like it really unleashed a part of you or gave yourself permission to really lean in and say, what do you want in this lifetime? Oh, yeah, it was. I want to say this year is the best year of my life. But prior to that, that, that year that we split up was the best year of my life. I mean, it was it was transformative. It was inspiring. I was having more fun than I ever could have imagined. Did you go through a heartbreak or was it all roses and rainbows and stuff? Oh, no, man. I, I was having a good time. I was hitting the gym. I was running in the woods and shit for the first time, like a little kid. And I was going home and crying. You know, yeah. it was 
It was it was the whole experience. Kind of yeah, all of it. It, it was down. everything. It was visiting friends I hadn't seen in a while, just breaking down around them. It was, you know, eventually I found some some men's group work and just being able to still grieve some of that stuff, even though I was in in a lot of joy day to day. Okay. And yeah. and are you starting to? Are, were you aware that you were changing the story you had about yourself as you're going? Because some people get thin, but they're still in a very limited mindset, or they may make a lot of money and they're still, they still see themselves as small and poor and whatever the thing that they're trying to outrun that they, they know they, they don't really change from that. Were you aware that your story was changing or, or what? Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was clear. It was clear that I was making a conscious choice to change all the stories. I mean, and we talk about changing the story. I like to think of things a lot of the time as mental or emotional technologies like that capacity to change story, to choose which story to, to, to believe in, to choose which story to create, I was very aware at that point. I don't remember, you know, there was a lot of work I, I stumbled into, um, authors, coaches, gurus, whatever. I don't remember what it was, but something showed me that opportunity to restory and be aware of it. And I was very conscious, yeah. I don't think I, I want to dive into the story piece because I don't think that people, most of us really realize the story we're getting up in the morning and we're telling about ourselves and then we perpetuate as we go. So, yeah. and you'll hear it in people's language, like, well, I'm not the type of guy that does X, Y, Z. And it's just like, okay, well, there you go. That That's yeah. your fix. Now you're fixed into that position. And, and so when we start to do things that challenge those ideas, um, it rewrites the story. And I think it's really powerful to, to be very aware of the story we tell ourselves about ourselves because otherwise we don't see opportunities and i've had yeah. breakthroughs in my life that the breakthroughs have always been usually around the dismantling the old story that just doesn't serve me anymore and then i suddenly see like oh shit there's an opportunity right there but i wouldn't see it in the old mindset in that place uh, i still got to do the work still got to take risks still got to be mm-hmm. uncomfortable but the doorway now i see the doorway yes okay. totally so you're totally. aware that the story is shifting. I'm not the guy I used to be. Mm-hmm. And, and so what, 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 what's, what's showing up for you then? Okay. I'm, I'm changing my body. What, what, what happens after that? Mm, let's see. So the body changed a lot and just my belief, my, you know, I'll go back. My belief around what was possible with like a dating and social life was, a, was really the driver. And so I started to change all of that, but not because I was, I mean, I was changing that before I really turned the corner and started to get like close to 200 pounds. What do you mean you're so, changing it? What was, what, like, yeah. what was the limitation before? Oh man, I, I, I thought, gosh, I, women would not like me. I'm not attractive. I'm not interesting. Um, get this. You want to talk about story? I spent years, I spent 13 years on retail sales floors, my most inflow, most exciting times were during the holiday when it was busy and I'm seeing hundreds, if not thousands of people. And I'm like masters of ceremony and I'm I'm moving people around. I'm telling them where to go. And I'm, I'm just like seeing and hearing everything and keeping on a smile and having fun for 13 hours sometimes. And I was still telling myself the story. I was socially awkward because when I went to a party, I wanted to hang out in the corner by the chips and didn't want to talk to anyone. It was like this dual reality. Yeah. And, and so that was a big story. I'm socially awkward. Uh-huh. Even socially. though I know how to go out in the world <laughs> and be with people and all this kind of stuff. And I deal with this. I've got a version yeah. of that too, where it's, it's, I isolate and my wife calls me an island and I'm like, I'm on a fucking <laughs> island. And then I'm like, oh shit, I'm kind of a fucking island. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is that, it is mm-hmm. that thing. And it's, it's great to have people in, or something to reflect back to us because right. it's just like, is it really true? I'm socially awkward. And then you get to yeah. pick that apart and see if it, if it really sticks. Yeah. I'm socially awkward. I'm unattractive. I'm bad with women. Like I'm not like one of the guys. Well, what uh, a great story. It keeps you from getting hurt again. Again, you don't oh, have yeah, to go I guess, through I guess it. So I did get hurt. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, that, those were the stories before that big hurt. That was mm. almost like the big hurt unlocked it. Okay. I got this huge hurt. I know the career that I thought I was committed to for life was ending. I knew I had to end it. Oh, eventually I knew the, the, the marriage I was in, which I thought I was in for life was ending at that point. It's like, why not change? Nothing's going to hurt more than that was the belief I was operating from. Mm-hmm. It's like pff, walked through that threshold of experiencing the one thing I, the, the things that I said, okay, I'm going to die. Like if this happens, I'll die. And then and you're like, wait like, a second, I'm okay. 
three days later, I'm like, no, there's joy to be had in life. I can be different from there. And, and that still serves me today. Bring it on. Right. That, that, Bring it on. that Bring thing it on. that, that thing that I'm avoiding is, uh, I'm referencing, uh, Phil Studs, Barry Michael's tool, yeah. right. Where the reversal of desire, that thing you want to avoid, if you turn directly into it, it's where we find our power. It, it drains us to avoid that thing. And we create our lives in such a way that we avoid that stuff. And then we're drained. We don't understand why we're drained, but what if we could train ourselves to move into that in service of greater freedom, aliveness, peace, and love. Right. But but yeah, mm-hmm. if I, if I just, if my life purpose is to avoid stuff, which it is, most people's life purpose, they, I don't have a purpose in life. No, you do. It's to avoid shit. That's your life. Look at all your choices and you've, right. everything you choose to do is to avoid discomfort. And yeah. what I'm hearing from you now is like, okay, wait a second. I've got a taste of what it means to find more of myself, to have more power when I go through the things that I'm scared to do. Yeah. Yeah. How Actually, does that, I, ch- how does that change things for you then? Um, I operated a lot from anxiety, from fear. Everything was a thousand reasons why I can't do something. And so once I started to understand my nervous system, once I understood, started to understand how to restory things, how to un- choose which emotion to believe Where and were feel. you learning this stuff, by the way? Like, oh, man. I don't know. Probably the new man of Trip Lanier. Um, well, no, no you, I know you listen yeah. to the podcast, but you were, yeah. I, I don't want to just make it sound like you were just on the street no. fucking figuring okay. this out. Um, you know, Dr. Glover, Robert Glover's work, no right. Mr. Nice Guy was very helpful. Yep. Um, I actually did, uh, I did a course on called fierce relaxation for men, which was really about the nervous system and about how it relates to our anxiety mm-hmm. and how to not only manage the nervous system, but how to manage thought. Um, I did a, a, a group coaching program around dating. I did a group coaching program around social authority and social confidence okay. and leadership. Um, so you became a student. You, it oh, wasn't yeah. just a hobby. You, oh, you yeah. really, you went from hobby to student and then you're applying this. I, I just want to put that up because a lot of people think they can listen to a podcast on their way into work and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I fucking yeah. got it now. It's like, no. Well, I was doing all that, but I, like I, I did become insatiable. It was probably um, a little overboard for about a year and a half, but Thank goodness, because look where I am now. But but essentially, I I just I was reading or studying or watching TED talks. Like it was just on. Like mm-hmm. it was on. I wanted to understand more and more about how humans worked. I wanted to understand how I work. I wanted to apply new things so I can have joy. And you know, it's easy. It's it's what you were talk you, about. Were you operating towards joy at that time, or was it just? I don't. I want to make sure I don't turn into the fat, awkward guy again because that happens a lot on the growth path, which yeah. is. I don't want to go back. Like that was a shadow side of the personal growth that I got into. It was like, I just went through a huge amount of grief and pain and I'm going to learn some escape from that. And I didn't realize that I was seeking exoneration from that until I got hurt again. And it was like, fuck man, I studied all this stuff. It was supposed to save me. I didn't realize I created a trap for myself. So it was that part of it too, just to make sure you don't go backwards. So to speak. It was, it was a both and yeah, Uh, I would say that the initial, like springboard period of eight or 10 months of this, it was joy, man. It was excitement. It was aliveness. It was experiencing things I never experienced before. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it was, it was literally whether it was sitting, watching a stream and feeling the connection to nature or whether it was like, you know, dating three women that were much more attractive than I ever imagined were possible and doing it with, within my values. Um, it was really joy. Now I will tell you, there was a point where I passed a threshold where I had kind of been in this new life for a while and then yeah things started to come up as protections I like it normalized to, okay this is the new normal yeah okay and actually i would say even now even this past year year and a half i'm unraveling a belief that if i don't do all of my self-care if i'm not constantly studying right like if i'm not always learning something new that there's a potential to backslide that still comes up for me it's very rare I think you've seen it a couple of times yeah. when I'm deep in the anxiety, those old ways will pop up. Those old thoughts will pop up. Um, but yeah, I would say it's, it's a both. And a lot of it is just, I have a pretty intense morning routine and people are like, Joe, you're so disciplined. Right. And a lot of times I go, I'm not really that disciplined, but if you could feel how it feels to be me when I do it and when mm-hmm. I don't, mm-hmm. it's a natural choice. Right. I, so it's a both. And a lot of it is, is, is worrying about, okay, Okay, maybe I could slide back. I know the possibilities. I know what's possible within my own shadow behaviors and and with my own relationship to food and body. Um, 
I don't think I could slide backwards in my mindset and my emotional awareness anymore. I which think it's a huge thing when we understand, like when it, when it's so painful to wake, you know, to wake up from that sleepwalking and be like, oh my god, I cannot believe I wasted it, or I just spent so much time in that place. And if we've got any of that achiever type in us, we're going to measure everything. We're going to quantify everything. We're going to like, okay, it's a product of these practices and da, 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 da. And man, I know a lot of people in this space that it's just like, if I'm not doing my practices, I'm a piece of shit. Like it just turns into another yeah. way to beat ourselves up and judge ourselves. And, it, but it's rooted in that. I think if you get curious about it and you say, what is that about? It's the fear. It's like, if I don't do this stuff, I'm going to turn into the thing I hate, that part of me that I hate. Yeah. And, um, so anyway, I, I just think it's great to disarm that, take some, take, take some of the teeth out of it. And then you start to find, okay, where am I not just living in reaction to yes. avoidance, you know, cause it's still, now you're still just outrunning shit. You're still, yeah. before you were outrunning, you were avoiding one thing and now you've just created another trap where you're avoiding something. It just looks better now. People compliment you more. <laughs> you yeah, know, right, like, right. It, it feels, there's a lot more positive feedback loop. So, so absolutely. What you're talking about is so valid and it's just something to always be aware of. Once we decide, once I decide, you decide, once one of my clients, your clients decides, okay, I'm going to really take action to grow and be the person I want to be, create the life that I want. There's, it's very beneficial to know that at times it's going to be about just moving towards joy and what we want. And when we're not being very thoughtful or conscious, some of the avoidance or rejection or reaction strategies will come up. Mm -hmm. So, I try and check in with that. Uh, I'm certainly getting better about it. I think coaching people. <laughs> so how did you become a coach? Because so right. so is this, is this where you started to get into wanting to help others? Yeah, when I when I looked at August 2012 versus August 2013, it was like a calling. It was I couldn't. I had changed so much. I was experiencing so much joy. I didn't think I would. So much aliveness. I didn't think I would ever in my life that I I just. I remember waking up one day just being like, I have to help other people. I have no idea how to do it. Mm. No idea how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I knew. And I, it helped that I was about a year into realizing my, my career was stagnant. So it just became an awareness that grew in me. And then I started taking a lot of my personal growth action with the concept, with the idea of, well, I'm going to keep going so I can be better at helping people when it's time. Mm -hmm. So I keep learning. So then there was a long path. It still took me about um, a year and a half still to leave my old career. That's um, still pretty quick. <laughs> well, you know, it, it uh, shit had hit the fan one too many times. And I, I knew for a fact. So, so, so managing retail is very much a matter of you build a team, it falls apart. You build a team, it falls apart. And I just knew I didn't have another six month period. The team had fallen apart at a pivotal time in the year. I had helped some people get promoted. I had some part time employees that left. And it just was was so obvious. I'm not the guy to rebuild this team. It would have been out of integrity. It would have been out of alignment with who I want to be when I'm lack when I had gotten to the low point and passion that I had about that old work. So so that helped. I hit a point where I knew I'm not going to be able to do this. I don't want to make a lateral move. And so I was willing to just jump into the abyss. <laughs> Where was you like, what's your security stuff at that time? Because there's people that are like, there's no freaking way I can redefine myself. I can't go through that. Like I, I can, I can reshape my body, but I can't, there's no way yeah. I can address my career. There's just too much security stuff tied up with that. Did you have that? I mean, you, you were on your own at that point. Right. But yeah, what, uh, what came up for you there was that was, did you come up with anything that was like, I, who am I to redefine myself and start over? That's another thing. Some guys get into this mm. ego thing. Like I can't start over at such and such age that becomes a story. Did you have any of that stuff? I did. I did, but I also just knew it was happening. I, I don't even know how to, how to explain this. I mm -hmm. just knew it was happening. And so again, with the powerful capacity to restore situations and choose what I want to believe, I, I knew a few things. I could make a lateral move right now into some sort of other retail thing, and then maybe a year from now try and figure out some sort of other career shift. I knew I'd be miserable doing that. Like I was, I believed I'd be miserable doing that. So I almost felt like this is the choice. The choice is to jump to figure it out. I knew a few things. I would never be homeless. <laughs> like I know that's Why? getting down. Why did you know that? I 
you know, I, I, by that point, I already had, you know, I do some rites of passage work and men's emotional development work with Mankind Project. At that point, I had enough Mankind Brothers, like community. So you and felt com- supported. You, you I felt knew. supported. Okay. But I knew I didn't even need them. I, I have two sisters that are local in the area. They have families, you know, they mm. have townhouses. There's always going to be a couch. Right? What a wonderful thing, because I think, you know, there's... That's one of my edges. I don't know if I am supported, even though there's evidence of support all around me. It's one of the things I've got to deal with is like, am I really supported? I support a lot of other people, but am I really supported? So that would be one of the things that if I was to believe that story, I wouldn't, wouldn't lean into that. So I love that you're demonstrating that. Yeah. So, so I knew that there'd always be somewhere to land, even if it was really miserable and ego destroying and tail between legs type of situation. Um, I knew that I had about, I live very tight. I'm working on that as far as finances, mm-hmm. you know, but I knew that I had enough money saved because I, I lived in scarcity. So even though I didn't make a crazy living, I was always able to save. Um, I knew I had about a year of, of livable money in the bank. I just knew it was the time. I mm-hmm. didn't have kids. I was selling the condo. I was finishing the divorce, selling my stuff. Like it was almost like, this is it. Mm-hmm. This is the time. So so the belief that I could always go back and get a job in retail, I could probably always go back and get a good job in retail, right? So there was just these, 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 these awareness. If I, always, if I needed I to, I could always, there was always a plan B. Yeah. So yeah, you I, didn't fall into this finality of it's this or nothing. And I'm, it's hand jobs at the bus station kind of thing. No, nah, man, at the worst case scenario, I'm sleeping on a sister's couch and I'm spinning a hell of a story in job interviews. It's like. Got it. You know how hard I, well, what that demonstrates is a trust in self. I, yeah. I think that's the part that I want that I want to underline here. It's not a inflating of self, like a, it's not a delusional sense of self. It's just like I have these skills. It, it's like I know how to wash my car. I know how to go right. get a job if I need to get a job. And I think that there's a a part where we dismiss these things, where we deflate who we are, especially in our sense of authority and our professional authority. We could talk about that in a little bit because we did an exercise around that, but. But yeah. it, it's, it's, it cripples us when we don't yeah. recognize I'm capable. I have these skills. It's just a skill. It's not like, look how great I am. Um, and when we recognize we've got skills, wow, look at what's available to us. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So between my knowledge that I could put things back together and then figure out a time to regroup and then start over and my belief in self and my feeling like this is a calling and this is the time, it just... You know, it's almost like the choice, it sounds cheesy, but the choice, it feels like the choice made me. And then I went through about two months of serious fear and grief and needing all the support that I needed. And yeah. Did you, I, I were you one of those guys like, well, once I feel confident or once I feel like once, once I'm passionate, I'll do it. That's a huge excuse too. It's like, I'm waiting for confidence. I'm waiting for certainty. I'm waiting for all this bullshit that can only be a product of leaning into it. Did you have any right. of that stuff showing? I get that you you knew it was the time, but I didn't get that there was any green lights like you had money and everything all lined up for you. No, I, I wanted hmm, I wanted to know what was, it was going to look like, and I was so clear that the state I was in in my nervous system in my mind, going through a really hard time with that past career. It was so clear to me. I wasn't going to figure anything out staying in the work I was doing. I wasn't going to figure anything out, making a lateral move to another company. I knew I needed space. Mm -hmm. And so that felt more attractive to me at the time than needing to know the answers. Um, there, There was at that point a deep belief. I'd done so much work with body, with mind to know I can handle anything. Like literally that's been a mantra that's not left me for years. I can handle anything. I work Mm -hmm. into meditations and workouts. I write it when I'm feeling a little low, you know, it's like, I just had that belief that I could handle whatever was going to come. I wanted certainty, but it wasn't going to show up. And I was clear. I was never going to figure out the safe path until I just jumped. Yeah. And that was me. I don't recommend that for everyone, but that was my situation. No, no, I don't recommend it either. I I think people get excited whether they they see something shiny out there, whether it's coaching or or just any, whatever that next thing is, because they they just are tired of the bullshit that they're on, that they're dealing with. Um, When I shifted, I left, sold my business 2004, I left the business and it was official in 2006, but I went through a long time like, okay, before I commit, I got to have certainty. 
right. even though I, I was clear on the calling to be a coach and to be, I, I was, I knew it was going to be in that realm. I still resisted the hell out of it. Um, I didn't want to get trapped. I, I just, and I, I had a situation where I could dick around for a while because I sold the company and, and sold a house and I had some space to do that, but it punished me in a lot of ways because I didn't really have to make a move. So that avoidance that's spinning around, not penetrating, not really going into it actually was some of the most stressful time of my life. But if you looked at it from the outside, it's like, wow, it must be nice not having to work and not to this. I was miserable. I was I felt, freaking yeah. miserable. Like it wasn't a luxury. It was a hell in my mind of, I don't know what's going to happen. All I see is money going down. What am I going to do? How do I deal with this? I, you know, that kind of stuff and wanting a sign, wanting certainty, wanting to have the plan all figured out yeah. um, and wanting to minimize, you know, n- not minimize, like eradicate risk. I wanted to yeah. eradicate and, and thinking there was a way to do that. Right. And, uh, boy, I wish somebody would have told me, uh, you don't get to do that. Like there's risk and uncertainty and effort and everything you do. But I was like, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to outsmart yeah. this one. I'm going right. to figure it out. And it, I pissed away years. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the good thing is you're out there telling people that now. So <laughs> how beautiful is that? How, is that? <laughs> how good is that? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's so funny because it, it, it's like no amount of money or certainty really gives people this piece to just go into the abyss. I have a client right now. He's a, he's a principal. He's an owner of a, of a commercial real estate company. And, uh, he wants to do something different in his life. He's tired of it. He feels drained. He feels no passion. He wants to help people. And we had a conversation last week where he was like, I was like, what do you have? What? So tell me about what's going on. What do you really have? He's like, yeah, I got 1.6 million in the bank. And he's got a house that he's building that's paid for. But what's the belief? He's not okay because of what? He's not for, safe in because... His, in his mind, it still wasn't enough. It was like, well, it will take a lot, and I'll have to invest a lot, and it'll be this, and it'll be that. And Jess saw right through it, so we pierced it. We pierced it, and mm-hmm. I challenged him. I'm like, it's never... If 1.6 isn't enough, 1.6 billion is not going to be enough. Mm-hmm. To make a jump? You just told me you probably could live well for five years without changing anything you're doing to support yourself, your fiance, her two kids, right? right? So what's this really about? And he didn't have the answer. I told him, well, you know, go home. And he texts me like two days later. He's like, it's about looking good in life. And it's about like, yeah. I know I can get the reward that I, I don't care what other people think, but I care what I think is what he came back with. Yeah. I care that I'm, I see myself as someone who's creating value, creating money, knows where he can go each day and, and almost boringly succeed. Yes. Bored. He's bored. Yes. Right. So I just wanted to, uh, it's just, it's not, even if we have a plan or a path or we have a bunch of money, it's like the fear is still going to be there for most of us. I think the security piece comes up. It's the one that we can all say like, oh, it's risky to do. And we all nod our heads and like, yeah, that's really risky. And, and, but I, I think what I've found is the identity piece. Who am I? If I'm learning, I'm sucking, I'm struggling. I got to, I got to make a lateral move. What will my, you know, community think of me for changing that stuff is way more powerful than the practical conversation of, okay, how do we replace X dollars in your life this year? Right. That's a practical conversation. We get creative and it's amazing what these really smart guys can come up with in that. But the identity piece, the who am I, if that's the place where I find most people get stuck. And there's yeah. a lot of guys that, that come to me and they say they want to do stuff, but it just turns out what I call rich guy hobbies. <laughs> They're not committed, right? There's just this thing like that sounds good. Uh, but man, if I'm going to, if I got to do anything that's going to be risky or uncomfortable, or I might look bad, I'm not committed. I'm, I'll only go so far yeah. in that. And I'm like, great. Yeah. Well, you're going to get your lunch eaten by the guy that wants it. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. Are you, yeah, I, I see that. And honestly, I'm going to fluff you a little bit. Like, I think you're a genius at sniffing that stuff out. I've learned a lot. Just, I, I've learned a lot experiencing your coaching. It's, um, it's really clear that you get that. You're committed to that, the competing commitments, the identity pieces. And, and you won't play the game of, like, going through logistics until we've cleared the other stuff. Um, and I really value that and appreciate that. But my point, it is, it is so, it's always that. It is always that there's because the, the logistics stuff we can work on, we can figure that out, but you can, right. 
usually smell it in the conversation and was like, nah, I don't know. That won't work. There's always this like, oh, why, why does it feel like we're playing, we're shadow boxing here? <laughs> you don't want to find a solution. You don't want to find a logistical solution because you don't want to be at risk. The identity stuff, the story that we like to tell about ourselves. And of course, like who wants to look stupid? Who wants to go through the learning phase again? Who wants to go through the suck again? Mm-hmm. And, but we don't, I think the thing that I'm taking away from our conversation so far is that that's what invigorated you. That's where you found immense power was in that transformation. Yeah. We just look at it as the death of what we are, and that's where we can't go. But we don't see what's on the other side of that, all the possibility, all the energy, all the flow, all the freedom, the aliveness, peace, and love that's available there. So it's just like, eh, I'm going to just play right here. I'm going yeah. to hold on to what I got in hopes that something else comes along and drops in my lap or whatever. Mm-hmm. So and you get a lot of really rich, comfortable guys that aren't happy. Yeah, right. <laughs> what's 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 fascinating? The paradox here is like what, when I heard you talking about the part we don't want to do: challenge our identity, learn new things, make mistakes, look silly. That's the most alive part. Like that's when we're really alive and excited when we're learning. When we're I know, but even that, I resist that shit, and I know that. Well, me too. But you know, right? I mean, when I'm I'm going through <laughs> a pivot right now, and it's just like, uh, and wake up in the morning. Uh, and it's just, just like, ah, uh, and I don't even know, like, what is that? And it's just yeah. that uncertainty and like, uh, and it's not like, I'll be okay. Yeah, I'll be okay. There's a solution to that. We'll figure that out. But it's this identity piece. It's just like, oh, it feels like a death. Feels yeah. like a death. And it's like, oh, I don't want to fucking go through that again. <laughs> it, it is a death. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that dramatic, but there are right. these tiny Things. I think we would come back to mission, like, oh, there's the mission, right? There's the next mission that would be in, a lot, in, a, in alignment with this instead of what do I do to avoid the problem? What do I do to avoid the, the potential thing that might make me look bad or whatever? Mm-hmm. I hear you. Okay. Anything that you'd like to share? Anything that we, or questions that you have? Anything that, that, uh, Oh man, I have a lot of questions for you. I thought I had a lot of questions. Let's do it. I, I, put, to, I put together like this could be a full podcast. I put together for you. Maybe it's a couple. I, yeah, this I love this one because I know what I would say. And I'd love to hear what you'd say. Okay. What would you say to the guy who's like a newish coach, or maybe they've been doing a couple years and they're kind of marginally successful, and they were to say to you, and this is a client has asked me this today. <laughs> so literally, they say to you, so. Okay, I'm just tired of, of fear. I, I, I know there's a way to do this without being afraid. Is there? <laughs> I don't think so, but I wonder, I, I, would, I, I would be curious if you were to send a message out there to people who are asking this question. Because I, I think ultimately that's what we're always looking for. How do I make this work without being afraid, without doing the hard Wrong things? Question. Get... Wrong question. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, no, I think, that, I think that's important to, to underline. Because I, I, what happens when we start, when we're looking for the way to do it without fear is that when we encounter fear, then we immediately go, well, this isn't the right way. So we, we cross it off the list. So what if fear was an option? And then it was just a matter of, okay, well, how do I show up with fear? And I, I can say that all day long and people will nod their head and then they come back like a month later and like, yeah, so how do I do it without being scared? They're still on this path of exoneration Right. I'm going to find a way where I don't feel uncomfortable anymore. I don't have to make any effort. I don't have to feel any pain. I don't have to feel any uncertainty. And I get it. Like, I just get it. That diet mentality you talked about, like, mm-hmm. that's it. That's the system is going to rescue me from that stuff. But I don't, I don't think there's a way to do it without fear. It's just expect fear and then be surprised or enjoy it whenever you, you know, just be like, oh, wow. And I, I enjoy it too. Uh, but the whole escape from fear thing is, um, that's an amateur approach. Right. That's the hobby right. approach, right? It's like, yeah, I'm willing to do it up to a point where it's not uncomfortable. And it's like, great, you got a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's it. Thank you for that. That's kind of the juicy one. I think that's, you know, I think the way I look at it is simple. Expect uncertainty, expect fear, embrace it. And like I said, if you understand that that's where we usually feel aliveness, right? Mm-hmm. If we can find that stretch zone in there, well, then mm-hmm. now we're, we, we can enjoy it. Right. And I'm in, the, I'm in the midst of a pivot. I'm in the midst of making some changes. And it's like, I can feel that thing. And, and I get it. Mm-hmm. And 
even still, after so many times of, of doing this in my career and in my life, there's a part, it's like, fuck, I want to be done with this so bad, but it helps. What creates less suffering is the idea that I used to have, which was this must be wrong if it's here. Right. So if I, if I just say, oh, you know what, it's just going to be scary sometimes. But if I'm oriented towards what I want instead of what I'm trying to avoid, if I'm focused on, okay, I, I, this, is, this is the path, this is what's creating greater freedom, aliveness, and peace and love for me, and this is more expansive, and you know what, it's freaking scary sometimes, that has me relax and just drop the second voice, which is, is this the right thing? Am I on the right path or on the wrong path? It must be the mm-hmm. wrong path if it's, un- if it's uncomfortable. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot easier. It's just like, cool, all right, here we are. This is uncomfortable. And here we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, we have a pretty dysfunctional relationship with comfort and, and or stress in a lot of our world today. And I, it just creeps into the mindset when people are trying to build a business. And I, I don't remember anyone ever saying it would be easy or it would be without fear. But somehow we show up. Somehow I still show up. That'll times. sell. Right. Yeah. No, people sometimes do sell it, but at the same time, and you talk to people who really own it, who've owned businesses for a few years, they'll tell you. I think that's why the whole kind of guru thing falls down, or maybe it's coming back now, but that, that guy that would stand on stage with the little microphone on his cheek and that kind of stuff, he projects the image of no more fear. And I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody, but that's the thing is like, oh, if I, that guy's figured out a way, he's not scared anymore. And I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't, um, I've, I've been around enough of that shit enough and been behind the scenes to realize, man, there's a lot of bullshit. There's just a lot of crap that's happening there. So I think that we thought that that before, maybe that's what they had to do in order to sell in order to be successful. And that's, but I, I, I just find it's like, it's a lot easier to just tell the truth and be like, no, it's scary. Sometimes it is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, And if that's what you're seeking is that path then great, go somewhere else. But if you can tolerate some fear and we can find a way for you to manage that and it'll be scary sometimes, but Holy shit, you might actually have some fun too. Yeah. Oh, well, then let's go on the ride. Mm-hmm. I love so, it. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that one. To me, that's the juiciest one. Is, is we're, we're searching for how to do it without fear. And I think it's great if you can catch that, right? Because like, I, yeah. I still catch myself in that. Like, oh, yeah. Like, I was in an exchange with Barry Michaels the other day. I don't mean to name drop, but it was like, yeah, Barry will have the answer. And it's like, you're just going to be <laughs> the fucking tool. It's in the book. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's just like. <laughs> I'm gonna, there's a, there's a secret and it's just like, oh yeah, I'm still f- trying to find yeah. the thing. If I'm unconscious, I'm still looking for that thing. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. And, and that's, that's, that, that's that part of us that it, it's very hard to see by ourselves. <laughs> I mean, no matter what, it's like, that's a blind spot that will be a blind. You just helped me through a major blind spot around this in my personal life. Right. And, and it's just, it doesn't matter how much work we've done sometimes and how much we're helping others and how we show up in the world. It can be a blind spot. Yeah. I, you mm. know what? It helped to become a father. Mm. When, you, when you witness childbirth <laughs> and there's fear and a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort and you're like, this is the most, this cannot be right. And you're like, no, this is the most natural thing on the planet. Mm-hmm. This is what we're designed to do. Everything else is like, whatever. Uh, and you start to realize, okay, this is a natural part of the growth and creative process. Then it, uh, you start, you stop questioning or you stop making this up, this story that somehow discomfort and fear might be wrong. So, yeah. Oh, well, maybe one day, one day we'll be free. You're dead. Good. (laughs) Something to look forward to in death. Oh man, don't get me down that path. Yeah, well, that's another. We could talk about death wishes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Go there. Yeah. So you know, one one thing left. I think you spoke to it, but uh, you know, I, I've been. We have this communication where I've been a listener for a few years. I've been a client for a year and a half, coming on two years. And as I see you doing more to promote the work with coaches. I still find a curiosity. I, I think I know it because we've connected so much. But if I'm just a listener, if I'm looking at your stuff, I want to know, like, what's this? What's this pivot about for you? You know, in a simple way. Why am I speaking to coaches and yeah? And t- it appears to me like you're putting more effort into that, and so it's got to be something that you're you're very focused and passionate about. So I'd want to know more about it. 
I think I think it comes down to first it's just a personal practice. They're like, where's my yes? Where where's my excitement? And where my excitement is, it's shifted over the years. It used to work with the guy that listened to the podcast and just wanted help dealing with XYZ in his relationship, or maybe he wanted XYZ in his in his business. And that was exciting. And then it's become more and more clear to me where I get the most juice and the most reward and the most meaning is when I see how our work together in a coaching environment is now rippling out into the world. And so the people I'm having the most fun working with are, are out there making things happen with others. They're creating meaning in other people's lives. And I get to hear about that. I get to hear the stories that you tell as a coach, but I also work with other business owners that do things in their businesses that are impacting other people. And, and it's just like, I just get fucking lit up. I mean, that's, that's it. Like, that's just where the excitement is, is look where this guy's overcome X, Y, Z in his life. Look where he's not playing small anymore. And now look at how that's impacting these other people. So it was one thing to be like, wow, look how that's impacting his home. That was great. And now it's like, okay, I want home, family, marriage, and his community or, you know, the, the world that, that he, he's, he's a, a part of. And so one aspect of that is coaches. It's not just coaches that I work with, but the, but the people yeah. that I enjoy working with are the ones that are finding that meaning in their mission and they're doing something in there and, and business may be a part of it too, or maybe they've got the, the, the funny, the financial thing worked out, but there's another aspect of it too. It's like, okay, I want more alignment here. There's a way that I create more meaning here and there's more impact. And, uh, I got to get out of the way. I got to get out of my own way. There's something that's showing up there. I, I see a possibility, but I got to get out of my own way. And I, those are the guys I'm just men and women that I love working with. Um, what's that thing when you're laying on your deathbed, at 115 years old, you're going to be glad you did. What you look back and instead of like, well, at least I played it safe. At least I colored in the lines all those years. Like, well, what's the thing that, that was like, man, I, I, I did the thing that made me feel alive. You know, I did the thing that just was from my heart. Like I just really believed in that and wanted to share that in this lifetime. So that's yeah. where I'm coming from. I, that's, that's where I'm speaking to. So yeah, coaches are part of it, but yeah. not just part of it. Right. But coaches are great because then they go out and help other people more. Like it just, yeah. It just, that's where, that's where I'm loving. It's like throwing lots of rocks in the water and seeing all the, the waves, all the ripples yeah. spread out. Yeah. That, that definitely is inspiring when I hear you talk about being a force multiplier by the work that you do helping people, those people are helping others. And it just became, becomes that huge ripple effect. That's, it's meaningful to me to hear that. And it inspires me to hmm. look at, look at some of my work the same way. Yeah. Even if it's, even if it's just help, even if I'm just working with a person, you know, I, twice in the last month, uh, some of my clients go, you know, we're not focused on this, but I'm actually showing up as a better father. And, and that just, even that, it feels so powerful. Like we're, we're impacting the consciousness and the lifestyle and the way that people are going to actually experience life and relationship in a next generation. <laughs> like right. it's, as simple as that is. I think that most people are not aware they're usually just so focused on getting through and creating comfort and safety in their life. And that's fine. But then there's a thing of like, all right, something's missing. I must need more comfort. I must need more safety. But most of the time, what they're really wanting is to step into that next phase, which is meaning. Mm -hmm. And they're not connecting the dots there, which is, okay, where do I create meaning? Well, it's usually like you, you talk about, I, I went through this change. I want to help others do that change too. Yeah. It's, it's some version of helping. A, it's, it's, it's helping a previous version of ourselves. Right. And it's that simple. It's that simple. So we don't have to go make some huge monumental thing out in the world, but a lot of times just finding that person we can mentor or we, we lead a group at our local church or whatever it is, you'd be surprised at these guys that, I, I mean, I've worked with guys that do all this crazy shit professionally and then pivot oh. and find the most meaning just mentoring a couple of young people. And it just makes their whole world so much different, so much better because they, they have that meaning in their lives. But in their world, if, they, if they're unconscious, they think, oh, I need another raise, or I need to make more money, or I need to do this other bullshit. And it, it's like, yeah, after a certain point, though, so what, right? Where's the, where's the impact? When, when, you, when you turn and you say, okay, what can I, what's the mark I want to leave here? Where's, where's the, where do I find that joy? And a lot of people just have to shift from thinking of me into we. Mm -hmm. Never been more true for myself, I can tell you that. Yeah. I've always felt more alive and fulfilled and connected with myself and others when there's an opportunity, when I create opportunity to help others. 
yeah. whether it's volunteer work, whether it's paid coaching, it's just, uh, that's where the juice is. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think if we can challenge some of those ideas, like I need to be more comfortable first, or I need to more be more safe first, we find that when we're doing the meaningful work that, oh, I'm actually okay. We actually start to feel it, it nourishes that part of us that thinks that we need more safety or comfort. So I, my, <laughs> I think the guy out there, I'm speaking to the guy out there that thinks that he needs some kind of condition met before he can start doing some meaningful stuff. What if, what if that wasn't true? What if you could just start now and he'd, he'd start to hit into that, that identity stuff that we talked about earlier? Like, well, who am I? Who am I to help somebody or offer a lending hand? I don't have my shit together. I haven't done X, Y, Z. It's like, well, you'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised what that might look like. So, Yeah, cool. I love that. Cool. You know, I think I think through the course of the conversation, I put together a few co- questions for you. I think we've pretty much answered them through the course of the conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, man. Well, I just appreciate uh, you taking the time today. I've, I've gotten to learn, even though we've worked together and I've heard so much about you, I, I've never really got to do the chronological thing so it was great to just get to know you in that way and there's something extraordinary about your your process which was that you had an awareness and and the way that you saw yourself change as you went through it i think that's the part that i would want others to get because i see others go through and do amazing things in their life but they don't quite catch it they don't quite catch that they've been able to like, hey, I did this, and I, I'm, I'm able to tap that in there. So I guess the thing I would want to take away or I'd want to help share with somebody else that's listening is like, yeah, l- go and look. Go and look at the things you've actually done and see. Not, not, not to blow sunshine up your ass and get delusional, yeah. but just to be like, oh, yeah, look at, look what I've done. I've been able to do this stuff. Um, it's amazing the opportunities you'll start to see in your life whenever you can recognize that you've built that skill set and, and you'll, you'll start to see doorways in those places. So that might've been a blind spot for you may have been obvious to you, but I don't think that's obvious to a lot of people. So mm. I appreciate you sharing that. I would, I would want that guy to go back and listen to that part. Beautiful. Cool. Yeah. I love you, buddy. Thank you so much, man. I love you too, man. You've meant a lot for me and you've helped me in so many ways and I'm uh, very grateful. Cool. All right, buddy. We'll talk soon. Yeah. If these interviews are helping you, then please visit the new man on iTunes and leave us a positive review so others can discover the show more easily. Thanks for listening.